Prof, good afternoon and thank you very much uh, for your time and thanks for joining us here on the Midday View on ENCA. How many coronavirus variants do we have in the world today? <laughs> okay, thank you and, and, and uh, hello to all your, your viewers. Yeah. So, so in, the, in the coronavirus we have two kinds or, or, or basically we have three kinds of of virus or what the first one what we call lineages that's the ones that that it has mutations but we are not that worried because that's the natural evolution of the virus and for example uh, before october last year in south africa we had normally 50 lineages circulating the country but they didn't have any any genetic change that would impact transmission or, or, or the vaccines until the 501v2 arrived and took over. And that's what you call a variant of concern. It's concern when there is a lot of mutations and it is circulating at very high levels. So a lot of our viewers are not going to be aware, but at the moment in South Africa, like 99% of the infections of the second wave and continues until now is that same, same variant, but the same in Zimbabwe, in Mozambique, and in Malawi and Zambia. So this variant that we discovered in South Africa, which we don't even know if originated in South Africa now, is completely widespread across the region. And that's what you call a variant of concern. So variant of concerns, we have three different ones in the world. One is the 501V2, another one is the 501V1, which is also known by the B.1.1.7 that was discovered in the UK and it's causing most of the infections in Europe. And the third one is what you call the P1 or the 501Y.V3 that originated in South America and now is dominating this terrible pandemic in Brazil. So that's the three variants of concern. In addition to that, we identify another five variants of interest what it means, a variant that have large number of mutations, but at the moment they are restricted to a given geographic region. So in the last year, in our work with the Africa CDC, it's one was identified in Nigeria, yeah, that's the B.1525. Another one was identified in Uganda, the A.23.1. And recently, last week, we identified one with the Minister of Health of Angola, that it came from Tanzania travelers, which also have large number of mutations, much more than the one identified in South Africa. But at the moment, we call variant of interest because we don't know how widespread it is. Okay. Now, so many variants, three variants of concerns, as we've explained. South Africa, originally the UK, and then South America and Brazil is suffering at the moment. And then you've got these five variants of interest, including places like Nigeria, Uganda, and recently you say... Uh, the Tanzanian travelers in Angola were found to have. Why, why does it matter how many variants are there? I mean, as the vaccine is being developed, I guess it's important to get to grips with them. Yes, okay. So, so just to complete, yeah, uh, it's, uh, I didn't mention all the two variants, but one was discovered in California and another one in New York. So one thing that we know, these variants emerge everywhere in the world, uh, South America, North America, Europe, and Africa. Yeah. Why we, we worry about them? Because most of these variants of concern or variants and the variant of interest, they have signed that they may decrease the vaccine efficacy or they may transmit much more f faster than the other ones. That's why we worry, and that's why together with the World Health Organization, we have this committee, what we call the Virus Evolution Committee, that we meet every week. I am one of the members of this committee. It's 25 uh, experts around the world to try to trace, but not only trace, but also try to derive interventions to stop these variants to, to circulate, because that's the best that we can do with them. How do you stop them? How do they differ? Because you've got all these fancy names for them, these scientific names. That means they are different, not just from a geographic location, but in nature and composition. Yes, exactly. So, so, so how they differ? So what they have, they have the main protein of the virus. It's called a spike glycoprotein. So the spike is like basic, it's a spike out that will bind to the cell to enter, yeah? 
and how they difference either they bind quicker to the cell and they enter quicker in our lung cells so that's why they cause more infection or when they are attacked by antibodies of natural infection or, or vaccines they can escape a little bit uh, better so that's how they differ so what we do we look for this main protein of the virus and then we try to identify how change it is from the previous one but then what we also do we take this virus to a very advanced uh, biosecurity lab you outgrown the virus and then you expose that to uh, samples of people that have been vaccinated or naturally infected so you can see how this virus how the antibodies will kill the virus and how much antibodies or how much vaccine you need to kill that virus okay pro finally and very brief if you may are the current global vaccination drives that we see including here which is still in phase one with the johnson and johnson vaccine in south africa are they good enough currently to stave off these mutations and protect us into the future Yes, especially the countries that have scale very fast. For example, Israel have scale to close to 70% of the population and transmission and, and, inf uh, and, and, and that, yeah, people dying decrease very fast. The same in Dubai, they have expanded a lot. The same in the UK. So that's why it's so important and that's why we are in this big activism, not only um, myself, but Professor Salim Abdul Karim and even our president Ramaphosa to try to tell the world that you need to scale vaccination to the whole world. Because one thing that we say, we are only safe when everyone is safe. So it's very important that the vaccination scale at same uh, level as Dubai or Israel or the UK to more poor countries such as in Africa or Latin America. Professor Tulio de Oliveira, thank you very much for your time on the Midday View.